I don't know what to make of this LSU coaching search right now, but everybody's talking about Lincoln Riley right now. And we yeah, the do, block's hot there. Yeah, we do know that if you're going to make the playoff, you're out of the coaching search, right? Because, again, Ravley had a great line where he's like, why would a coach leave a team going to the playoff to maybe make a playoff? Like, that's like if you're already going there. So, well, I don't agree with I don't really agree with you think You think a head coach would leave a playoff team before the playoff to come to LSU? Uh, you're talking about, like, at all or just before the game? No, I'm talking about, like, if, if you're making the playoff this year because of when LSU needs to announce this coach that he would leave – before the playoff game to come to LSU. I don't think there's any way that a coach would leave a playoff team. I'm not saying he'd leave before, but they would leave a playoff team if like LSU was waiting. But LSU won't do that because uh, obviously coaches change their minds. And Yeah, that's and what I'm saying. Things. I don't think LSU okay. can afford to thought, wait either. I thought you no, were trying to LSU say like LSU's wait. not a job big enough where, you know, if you wanted somebody in the CFP. No, it's just it's just the point of, it's 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 just simply the point of like, you're coming to LSU to try to make the playoff. If you already have a team in there, then it, 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 then combined with the point that, yeah, LSU cannot wait until after right. first signing it. They got to have a coach. So this becomes interesting because where there is all this Lincoln-Riley smoke, you now have an eliminated Oklahoma team, right? Yeah. So you have an Oklahoma team that maybe it feels like, okay, you know, that time, you know, now, now the timing box is checked off basically where he could fit in before yeah. early sign day. I don't know how real this is, man. Uh, you know that, I mean, look, definitely the two sides are talking. Like, I have no reporting on that. Like, obviously, of course they are. Because, again, they're talking to everybody. Yeah. And if you're that agent for Lincoln Riley, is it Sexton? I don't know. But if you're a Lincoln Riley's agent, no, I don't like, think it is, actually. Okay. Uh, of course you're having, like, if nothing else, Oklahoma's going to pay you more. Like, like so yeah, you're, you're definitely meeting and talking and everything. I just, uh, who knows? Who knows? His His quote yesterday and they asked him if him or his reps have talked to LSU. He said, I coach at the University of Oklahoma. You know how I feel about this place and this program. We've all been down this road many times before. You guys know where I stand, and that hasn't changed. So definitely not the answer that Jimbo gave. No. About I'd be the dumbest guy on earth. <laughs> no, that is um that is a bit more that's pretty shrewd by Lincoln there. Like it's not like too overly committal it's a lot of uh implied commitment right like look man you know me come on you know how you know what i've done in the past which is true right he's been rumored for plenty of jobs in the past and he said no to stay at oklahoma so he, he, it, it, that was kind of like nfl jobs the cowboys that was always yeah. the rumor he, he's kind of um he's he's riding a line of plausible deniability but i think like he he didn't go the oversharing route of james franklin he didn't go the, uh, you know, but he also doesn't fully shut it down like Jimbo. This reminds me of kind of like uh, what Mel Tucker's comments a few weeks back was when he was uh, basically like, uh, you know, I'm focused on the game or something, and so I'm not going to talk about that. I appreciate you for understanding. Uh, this was just so uh, we'll see. I mean, look, I you know how I feel on the Lincoln-Riley to Oklahoma thing. Has anything changed for you as, as this I'm feeling an increased fraying at the edges of LSU fan psyche. The closer that we get to this thing, like people are getting crazy. Well, are, yeah. are, are you are you sensing this? Yeah, you knew that was going to happen. Oh, for sure, yeah. for sure. But like people, there's just a little desperation. People are kind of sniping at each other, maybe where they weren't before. Because you just don't the have to running wild. Yeah, you got people that are like colleagues <laughs> going back and forth on Twitter. But that's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's 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 hot right now. But you typically don't have a coaching search this long. And LSU did it so early in the season. Like, mm -hmm. you felt like this was always going to happen. And not only do you not have it this long, I mean, LSU is one of the top five jobs in the country. So there's going to be heightened awareness with every single report of who's potentially going to be up for this job. Yeah. So, I mean, all those factors kind of come together. And the Twitter streets are um, they're interesting right now. Yeah, it's uh, and it's – and. And it's funny because you can just, I mean, you, the, the, the real streets are too, just like going out and talking to people. Like every single person I see during the day asks me who the next coach is going to be. And I, and I have, uh, I have, I have no idea. You should just throw like a random washed up coach's name out there and be like, dude, I'm hearing this. I, I'm just going to maybe, yeah, I'll just keep answering Terry Bowden. And I'll be like, look, he's bringing Rich Rod with him. Yeah. I mean, it's elite coordinating staff. Who's their D coordinator? Do we know? Is it a big name? No. Okay. Not like Rich Rod. It doesn't matter. He's going to keep Durante, so it doesn't even matter. Yeah. 
Uh, Durante Richrod. Okay, I can Terry Bell. I'm gonna go with Jerry Glanville every time somebody asks me. Choo, bring the swagger back. Yeah. Uh, some of my old bring man's, that black leather jacket to the sidelines. Yeah, some of my old man's Glanville stories from his time in Atlanta. Uh, let's just say the NFL was a very different place, and if the internet had uh, existed at the time, there would have been a lot of interesting pictures of Glanville uh, partying uh, all over the internet. So look, I. I'm not sure what to make of Lincoln Riley, how how real it is or not. But you know how, like, in this 24-7 sports take news cycle, in which we have such gems like on ESPN today, I saw Stephen A. Smith says LeBron will never win another title again. Uh, ESPN.com has an article, Tom Brady, three-time Hall of Famer, we make the case. And it's, like, literally an article <laughs> written to say that Tom Brady's had three Hall of Fame careers and one, et cetera, et cetera. So, no take stone will be left unturned and you're already starting to see now the I don't want Lincoln Riley crowd start to emerge how do you feel about that where do you fall on that because now they're like well I mean look you know he loses to Baylor Oklahoma's a little soft if he's in the SEC is he winning this many games like, do you actually want Lincoln Riley? It just, I mean, it's its funny how this <laughs> thing works, man. There is never going to be a head coach that's hired at a place like LSU where everyone's happy. It's just that's not going to happen. That's fair. It is, it is something that is, speaking in absolutes, impossible. But when you look at Lincoln Riley, you look at the people that have come after him, I think that you would have to be excited about it. And I'm not saying that I've, I've sat here and said, like, he's the number one choice, but... He's somebody that in his coaching career as a head coach is 54-9. Do you think that he should be yeah, – because let's say we both agree that we're taking Jimbo off the board. And, I mean, is he, is he would he be the top target right now? Like your top target, if you could just choose. I, I still – I mean, I've been consistent that I think he is in that that kind of, you know, tier most one, people would be happy right? tier. Yeah, yeah. The, the most publicly acceptable. He is the most general publicly yeah. acceptable hire on, on I the I mean, board. I, would, I, I definitely would be okay with Lincoln Riley being the head coach. I'd be okay with Dave Aranda being the head coach. I mean, there, there's a couple names out there that I would be okay with. I think if you're getting a Lincoln Riley, does, does he have some things that could – could worry you a little bit, like the defensive issues that they've had and, and the conference that they've played in. They've got an easier path. I understand all those concerns, but he's also, in his four years as a head coach, been in the Rose Bowl, Orange Bowl, Peach Bowl, Cotton Bowl. I mean, yeah, it's... it's Yeah, if you're judging, if, if, if you're saying that, it's, it's hard because he has all the numbers and the results in his hands. So if you're saying that he's maybe potentially overrated, you're just trying to speak in hypotheticals, which is always hard to form an argument on. Because when you talk to Oklahoma fans about all this, Jake, it, it definitely, some of them feels like uh, we're being a little ridiculous even thinking that it's uh, it's, it's a potential. Are, 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 are we being too LSU cocky or too LSU biased to think that um, Lincoln Riley would really come here? I don't think we're being LSU cocky. I think Oklahoma's a, a fantastic football program with, like you mentioned yesterday, one of the best histories of all time. Like, you, you, you put it up against anybody, right? Um, I don't think it's being LSU cocky. I, I think it's just some of the advantages that you have at a place like LSU. And obviously, like, resources and, and LSU recent history is fantastic. But the state of Louisiana, I think, really comes into play. Because when LSU wasn't winning when I was growing up, it's because you had guys go to Florida State, you had guys go to Miami, you had guys go out of state to all these different programs, and you lost the state. If you have the state of Louisiana, you're going to be a good football team. Right now, you still got to have, you know, piece A, piece B, and piece C that kind of blend it all together. But the state of Louisiana is so unique in the fact that, you know, Texas has so many schools competing for the same. And, and, you know, LSU has to go into Texas, but in state, Mississippi has two schools, Alabama has two schools, Florida has three schools, Georgia has multiple schools, South Carolina. You know, even though South Carolina is not on the same level as Clemson over the last decade, South Carolina still gets five star guys that play in the NFL all the time. Yeah. From in state. Yeah. Like Louisiana is very unique that they are the top dog in Louisiana, a very talent rich state to begin with, right? So, like, there's advantages like that. So, I don't think it's being arrogant. I think it's just when you lay it out, you've seen that the last three head coaches have won national titles. And all three of these coaches are completely different coaches, completely different people. 
with completely different philosophies, right? Yeah, it's not like true. it's not like a situation where you go from Bob Stoops to a Lincoln Riley, where a lot of the things kind of stayed the same. Yeah, I mean, talking about three completely kind of different head coaches here. So again, it's not arrogant. It's just laying out all the facts, seeing the facts, and knowing that this is a place that you can win and win a lot of games. Uh, you just, I don't know why this just popped into my head, but thinking about Georgia. Is Georgia the only school in Georgia? Right? Georgia Tech. I know, but I mean, I'm saying in nowadays, like for, yeah, like back in the day, Ramblin' yeah. Wreck, like that was a real, like, Georgia, Georgia Tech thing, but like, yeah, have I mean, they could, ground them into dust? Like, I think there's an argument can, made that they have kind of a power, can, like, you that's, can completely make that argument. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. a, whew. I guess it just never framed it like that in my mind. That's a pretty powerful state population wise to kind of it's have a great high school. Like that's that. why Georgia's where they're at right now. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just saying, so. like, even within Georgia Tech, who's certainly not on the same level, it's an ACC school that yeah, it's another power five still school. There. It's another power five school, absolutely. But in Louisiana, you just don't have that. Yeah, and then that wasn't even that wasn't even. It, it was more of just that was like a tangential thought that just popped into my head that I guess I've never really realized until you just said it. Okay, so uh, here's the deal with Dave Aranda, though, right? Because I, I agree, I'd be super into Aranda, but is Dave Aranda a better fit at LSU? Or USC. There's something I was at the City Club yesterday talking to some guys about, and it's like L.A. is starting to fall in love with Dave Aranda. You look at all these L.A. Times headlines, it's all about Dave Aranda's the right coach for USC, not because he beat Oklahoma, but not, and then it like goes on to explain, like, he's always been the guy. I just wrote this article after he beat Oklahoma, but he's always <laughs> been the guy, trust me. But, like, think about it. USC, again, they're, they're a little elitist. Um, they are. Now, that's, if you want to talk about having – an arrogance about where your program is. Yes. That's, yes. that's a place that you could have that conversation. With. But they like to think themselves kind of above the unwashed football masses. Right. And in line with that, I think that they, they, they look at Dave Aranda and you know, they, they look at their traditional kind your traditional kind of raw, raw football, tough guy coach, uh, or your kind of your boisterous cocky Pete Carroll character and to them, I think that feels a little stereotypical. I feel like they would just jump at the chance to have this kind of uh, different, you know, intellectual, more quiet, this just kind of a, this is intellectually superior feeling coach. I just feel like it marries like with exactly with what USC would want to invest in. And so I don't know. I would not be surprised at all if Dave Rand ended up getting the USC job. And he's got all kind of West Coast experience and connections, right? Yeah, that, that was going to be one of my main points. He, he knows the landscape, which is always important. Dave Rand is the, the very interesting candidate here. And I, I have championed for him for a long time. He is organized. There's no sto uh, stone that get, gets left unturned. I mean, everything is going to be in order from roster management to just everything in their day-in and day-out stuff. Um, I love the fact that he calls the defense. I love the fact that it's his game plan, all, all those type of things. He had a very good run at LSU. I wonder how he would work at a place like USC. Right? USC, like you said, like they want the glitz, they want the glamour. You're not getting that with Dave. Well, but You're I think a football that, coach. I yeah, but I think they like the that he's still he's not like your traditional meathead football coach. He's this uh, kind of like he's he's an intellectual, right? I mean, I I, I guess that's what I keep going back to, and it's almost monk like, more silent like a uh, savant type of. Delivery. I feel like that's just a quirkiness that would appeal to uh, the LA culture a bit because it's a bit it's a bit off color. It's just a bit different than what you normally yeah. see. What do you think? I mean, and I mean, it would be pretty awesome if I was in LA to have a Mexican American coach. Like that's like hugely representative of a, a massive population in California. No, there, there's a lot of things that make sense for Dave to be at USC. But what about Dave being at LSU? Like we've talked I about love it. Lincoln Riley. Like remember, like Scott tried to hire Dave away from LSU to be his defense coordinator at Texas A&M. I mean, they went after him and they went after him hard. So you know Scott appreciates Dave Aranda and, yeah. and thinks he's a hell of a football coach sure. or you don't try to go steal him away from LSU. So there is a tie there. That's true. I didn't think about that. Uh, look, I would be, I mean, I, again, my opinion doesn't carry any weight, though, because, I, I again, I would talk myself into most names, but Dave Aranda would make me excited uh, for sure. Man, I guess this is just a zone that we're going to continue to live in until December 15th. Well, it is. It's going to be a long time, but we got a question. Why wasn't Aranda off for the job after less? He was not ready. He was still a pretty fresh coordinator at yeah. that time in, in 2016. Like, he has since gotten 
more years, obviously, as a coordinator on the national championship team. And then he's also been a head coach now for multiple years. Yeah, I mean, that's the, that's the only reason. Resume. We're, the, exactly, like, that's the only reason we're even talking about him is because he took the head coaching job and now he's having great success. It's crazy because he was about to take that UNLV job almost, or at least he yeah. flirted with it. I think he was. And now, yeah, and look at him now uh, going to Baylor instead and just it's paid huge dividends after, after a rough year one, uh, really turning it around here in year two. I mean, look, I love watching this man talk football. Like, whenever I've gone to any of his, like, what do you call them? I don't know, conferences or coaching clinics. Coaching clinics. Thank you. Yeah. And so uh, I would love to get to see him talk football much, much more. But uh, we'll He's see. He's got guys on his staff that have LSU ties as well. He knows some people. of the current people here that you, you might try to hang on to. Um, and that you know, that is the other thing, though. If it did come down to LSU or USC, though I don't know that it does, we probably have framed a fake fight here. Uh, I don't think USC would be is, is as financially willing. It actually goes back to that cowherd take from a couple of weeks ago, like, who wants it more? And we have proven that we are complete psychopaths, and we want it, and uh, we are willing to invest in it, right? So, uh,